Welcome to this edition of India Means Innovation, where we discuss the technologically complex innovations coming out of India. Today we have with us Mr. Deepak Safeti, co-founder and CEO of Morphing Machines, an ultra deep tech startup in India. Welcome Deepak. Thank you Aditya. Deepak, the world is running on software and software runs on processors, CPUs and GPUs. But the computing requirements have been changing. Can you tell us about the trend lines in the computing requirement today? Typically all application software that we see and you know interact with today has typically run on CPUs and GPUs. These are a class of processors we call as general purpose processors, right? And the reason is typically they're fairly flexible. You can run almost any application you want on them, albeit with a compromise, you know? I mean, typically there will be a power, performance, or latency, or some other parameter which they'll compromise on in order to give you that flexibility. So to come to your question of what was the trend in compute, especially with the exploding compute requirements in a post AI, post data center, post cloud era, uh, what has happened is the typical CPU and GPU doesn't cut it anymore. What has this led to is actually a trend towards domain specific architectures, which is, hey, can we have a processor specifically for AI? Can we specifically have a processor for doing graph analytics? Can we have a processor for doing telecom 5G acceleration? So this has been the trend which we call from gen general purpose, moving towards domain specific architectures or domain specific processors. Now add to this into the mix another factor, the typical general purpose CPUs and GPUs adopt a mechanism of execution called as control flow. In order to just simplify it, essentially you can think of it that in order to do every single computation, they do a computation and they write to memory. For the next computation, they read back that same value for memory. Okay. This is an incredibly inefficient way, especially when memory reads and writes are the most power hungry operations in a given processor. The current CPUs and GPUs, uh, the workhorses of the compute world, have two issues. One is an inherent inefficiency because of the requirement of control flow that they read and write repeatedly from memory. And as the compute requirement goes bigger, the more the reads, the more the writes, the more the latency, the more the power consumption. So that is one inherent inefficiency. And the second is that they are general purpose. They are not domain specific. They are not flexible enough. Absolutely. The only thing they are excellent at because, you know, uh, some of these bigger semiconductor companies, fabulous semiconductor companies have really put in a lot of horsepower, brute horsepower in these architectures. So typically a Xeon or an AMD Epic, uh, you know, server grade processor is a massive monolithic beast, so to speak. Uh, and same with GPU. Instead of a monolithic, they have many thousands of multiple small cores, but it is essentially a brute force approach. It is not the most efficient or the easiest way to kind of go ahead for domain specific applications. There is a scope for a new kind of processor in a new kind of computing world. And Morphing Machines has come out with a new kind of processor, a massive innovation. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. So I think you laid the groundwork really well in terms of defining what the existing class of processors was, what the problems with that were, where the opportunities for the next wave, uh, you know, reside. And that is something which informed our architectural innovation. Uh, the fundamentals were very clear for us. Hey, how can we reduce unnecessary memory reads and writes? So the basis of our architecture is what we call as a data flow execution model. This is in sharp contrast to the control flow we discussed earlier. And what it does is essentially avoids all these memory reads and writes. Now, nothing comes for free. So in a data flow architecture, the compiler or the, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, software side of things is a little more complex in order to map a given application to the hardware in such a way that you don't need these memory reads and writes. You're able to do everything very quickly locally and just give a result fairly quick. Now, uh, so if you look at it in context, it means equal parts hardware innovation and equal parts software innovation. It's a perfect example of hardware software co-design. Uh, 
Um, and our architecture, what it does is it takes the ability to do things efficiently and adds an icing on the top of that, which is it is reconfigurable in nature. So this is an advancement on CPUs and GPUs. So what would you call it? Our processor is named as Redefine. It's best to think of us as an XPU. Uh, a typical XPU would you know, involve multiple types of compute units, a CPU, a GPU, an FPGA, an ASIC, some other types of processors, all in a single unit in order to solve something complex or varied, or in our terminology, we call it heterogeneous. Now, what we allow for is the same XPU capability with just a single processor redefined. A single processor replacing a cluster of different kind of processors giving you flexibility and power. So an XPU that is an advancement on CPUs and GPUs. Absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, to give a, a little additional context, the world of applications is changed dramatically today. You know, pre-2010 or 2015, we were in this era where applications are mostly single applications. You know, they would run and they would give you a user output, user would interact with them that way. But today, any application you interact with, which is, you know, a Google search or a Facebook ad, an Instagram recommendation or a LinkedIn recommendation, all of these are composite applications, which means they're not just a single application. They have got four or five different parts talking to each other. And typically, these individual applications which comprise a Google search or a uh, Netflix recommendation, they are running on different processors. This, you can see, will add to a lot of power, inefficiency, uh, and, you know... Latency. Is, exactly. Yeah. Latency, right? And uh, this composite application is actually, you know, now changing things as we go ahead. Uh, we now need compute, which is able to do all these different application workloads or an act like an XPU in order to give you the benefits of low power and latency. So that's where a processor like Redefine becomes incredibly important. Uh, it, 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 it actually allows you to scale up to higher levels throughput in latency and consume lesser power, doing more with your data center than you could do earlier. Let's say at 256 cores, what's the performance difference between read, uh, XPU, Redefine and a GPU? Absolutely. So I think uh, First, we'll have to normalize on a given basis because, you know, typically GPUs will only target static AI data parallel workloads. And uh, we actually, you know, target a lot more. But if, say, we take a use case which is, uh, you know, very specific to data centers like, let's say, a Bing search or, you know, something along those lines. Now, that is an application composed of three parts. Uh, we run the same application on the redefined XPU versus on a GPU. Uh, we will see at least a 3x to 4x in terms of throughput uh, coming in from Redefine. If you have to pick out individual stages of that application, also let me give you a very clear caveat. You know, we are not saying that we are better than GPUs in every single workload. We are, as a composite, we are far better. But if you take out one stage, which is the second stage of that uh, Bing search application, a GPU will be 2x faster than us. But when you look at all the three stages together, in terms of latency, in terms of output, and in terms of power consumption, we'll have them beat at least by a factor of three to four. Now, one of the things in traditional processors, CPUs and GPUs, mm -hmm. is that before you start any compute, you need to know all the input parameters, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. uh, but today's applications are, so, I mean, if you take a self-driving car or anything like that, there are so many inputs in calculations that you do not know from before. Uh, can the XPU redefine handle that? Yeah, a very good point, actually. So what you're referring to is what we call as dynamic applications, where how an application workload goes through computation is dependent upon the input parameters. And you know, a simple way to think about this is Fibonacci's number. Depending on what Fibonacci I'm asking you, the complete computation will change. Now, typical architectures, CPU, GPUs have not been able, I mean, CPUs handle dynamism fairly well because they do everything in software, but it comes at an incredible power and efficiency cost. Your other hardware accelerators like a GPU or a, a FPG, these are examples of static architectures, which means that if everything is known, they will give you the best performance possible. However, if there's the slightest amount of dynamism into it, 
it actually breaks the system today. They don't target those application areas at all. But the world is full of dynamic compute now. Absolutely. I think in a post data center world and a post AI world, definitely dynamism has increased a lot, which is why today the AI or the static part is done on these accelerators and the dynamic part is then again sent back to the CPU. Again, bringing in efficiency, inefficiency into the system. So that's why we say, I mean, our processor redefine actually supports dynamism ground up. Uh, we do not care whether your application is static, it has dynamism into it, we can deliver all of this on our XPU fabric. So you've created a new class of processors, XPU. Let me summarize this. First, you use a different alternative kind of compute architecture. You use data flow instead of control flow. In data flow, you don't have to read and write continuously from memory. So that gives you a huge advantage in efficiency and the time taken and less consumption of power. The second advantage XPU Redefine has over the CPUs and GPUs is it's far more flexible, it's reconfigurable. Um, it's domain specific architecture for multiple domains and on the fly it can reconfigure. You could be 5G, you could be AI, you could be automatic driving vehicles, you could be something else. All of these things are possible for us at any time because we can reconfigure in a software defined manner. I'd like to highlight at this point, typically whenever folks in the industry hear reconfigurable, they think a class of processors called as FPGAs, uh, which are very reconfigurable but incredibly difficult to work with. I'd like to contrast ourselves very clearly, we are not FPGAs. We work at a level of abstraction just higher than FPGAs, but give you the same niceties and goodness and allow for real time configuration. This data flow architecture, you said it's far more complex mm -hmm. um, on the software side as well as integration to the hardware side. How much research effort has gone into making it viable for the real world? Great, great question. I think, you know, the fact that uh, uh, my founders are from, uh, you know, leading academic institutes in India, Indian Institute of Science to be specific, has been a great boon for us. Academic research was the only route in which we could actually innovate on these things. And who are your co-founders? So my uh, founder-in-chief is actually Professor Nandi Somitra. Uh, he's been a career professor at Indian Institute of Science and superannuated last year. And in the time that he has been at Indian Institute of Science, approximately 80 of his students uh, masters, doctoral and postdoctoral candidates have worked on our processor to bring it to the stage that it is today. Dr. Ranjini Narayan is the other half of the founding team. The entire data flow origins of Redefine XPU is a direct outcome of Dr. Ranjini's PhD thesis from IISC uh, in data flow. Just on the compiler of the software side, you know, to go back to your question, uh, we, it has taken us about 11 years of research and it has resulted in six PhD theses and 12 master's theses to get it to the point where it is today. And this whole thing has been created here in India. Not only have we created it in India, I think one of the nice parts is, uh, you know, which we tend to uh, forget to disclose is that our, all the components we have taken are built ground up. We have not taken off the shelf components. We completely were a ground up innovation where even the smallest component we utilize and there are you know over 20 modules that we have within our architecture. All of them are ground up built to achieve that custom goodness of data flow, reconfigurability, efficiency, latency. This is a wonderful example of India means innovation. Congratulations Deepak, great to talk to you. Thank you so much Aditya, pleasure.